Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is another video in the Ethernet series, and today we will see how to create a HTTP server. We will use the HTTP daemon to handle the requests for the server. I am going to make three videos for this. The first video, which is this one, will cover the setting up of the HTTP daemon, and we will also run a basic server. In the next video, we will see how to use the SSI server side include feature to update the web page with new data. And finally in the third video we will use the CGI common gateway interface. So let's start the today's video in which we will simply set the HTTP basic web server. I am using STM32 F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project and click finish. First things first, let's set up the clock. I am using external high speed crystal to provide the clock, and running the MCU at max, 216 MHz frequency. Now if you are using Cortex M7 processor, enable the cache. This MCU I am using, have low flash memory, and this is why I need to use the external flash. I have already made a video about QSPI, and here I am doing the same process as mentioned in that video. If you have enough flash, you don't need to do this part. Alright, now let's enable the Ethernet module. I have our MII connection type. Make sure these pins are correctly configured as per the board schematics. PHY address must be zero, as I am using the onboard Ethernet module. This is it for the Ethernet setup, now let's go to the LWIP. Here, first we will disable the DHCP and manually assign a static IP for our server. Next, assign the memory of 10 kilobytes for the heap. This is the basic setup, which has been already covered in the first video of the Ethernet series. Now go to the HTTPD, and enable it. If you click on the advanced parameters, you can see a lot of additional setup. Like I said in the beginning, we will cover the SSI and CGI in the upcoming videos, so keep them disabled for now. That's it for the LWIP setup, now click save to generate the project. There will be a lot of errors, and we will fix them one by one. So let's build the code once. First error we have in the FS data. It is trying to look for the FS data custom.c file, which isn't present in the project. So open this declaration and set it to zero. We still have the error here but this time it's looking for the fsdata.c file. We need to include this file in the project. Here is the folder, makefs. This is the program to create the fsdata file. This folder, fs, contains all the resources you are going to use for the server. By default, it have the index page, a404 error page, and a image. You can modify these, or add new pages here, but for the simplicity, I will go with this basic setup for now. The index page looks something like this. And the 404 page looks like this. Now go to middleware, third party, LWIP, source, apps, HTTP, and open this folder.
We need to copy these files here. After copying, just double click the makefs data, and it will create a fsdata.c file. Alright we have created the FS data file, so refresh the project, and build again. We still have errors, but they are not about the FS data file not being present. The error is due to these functions. So next we have to do is, exclude the fsdata.c file from the build. You can see it has been excluded from the build. Let's try building again. Alright the fsdata related errors are gone now. This error is because my flash is overflowing. So I am going to use the external flash. I am mentioning this again that this part has been covered in the QSPI video, and all I am doing is booting from the external flash memory. And now we have zero errors. I still need to relocate the vector table to the external flash. Alright, let's write the code now. First of all include the httpd header file. Next we will create the netif structure, just like we did in the previous videos. In the main file, initialize the http daemon. And finally in the while loop, we will use our usual setup. Ethernet if input and check timeout. Let's build and debug this now. Since I am using the external flash, I need to use the external loader. Let's put a breakpoint here to check if everything is initialized properly. Alright we are hitting the breakpoint, so everything is fine. Let's go to the IP we assigned to the server. And here we got the web page. If we try to access something else, it will show the 404 error. So the web page is working all right. Like I mentioned, all the resources you are using must be in this FS folder. And this is the index page. You can modify this according to your need. But after modifying, you need to again create the FS data file. Let me show this. I am modifying this index file now. Create the new FS data file. Build the code again, and run it. And now you see the new data is showing up. 
or write what will happen if we don't rebuild the code. I am modifying the file again. Create a new FS data file. Reloading the page doesn't show the new data. It doesn't work like this. We must rebuild the code, and then upload it again. And now you can see the new data showed up. So we can't change the web page in the runtime. And this is where the SSI comes in. The server side include will do this job of updating the new data in the runtime. And we will see that in the next tutorial. This is it for today. I hope you understood the process. Watch the previous Ethernet videos to understand more about the setup and QSPI videos for the external flash. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.